My life has been a story that's very Oxfam, because I grew up in Uganda under a military dictatorship. I fled, I became a refugee in England. I survived two wars in my country. And when we're responding, saving lives of people trapped in conflict, people trapped by disasters, working with activists on the ground who are resisting dictatorships, who are fighting poverty. It just reminds me of my life. My parents were school teachers, and as I said, we were living under a dictatorship, and they made me understand that that dictatorship didn't define us and that we could do something about it and we should stand up and we should say no and we should keep opposing. I'd see my father getting up in the morning, working with lawyers to sort out documents and to, to take a woman to court to claim custody of her children or get the inheritance of her children. And I wondered why my parents did that and I even often asked my dad, I said, but where is this going to end? There are always problems. And you know, and he would tell me that, you know what? As long as there's a problem every day you get up, work at it. That's what life is about. Because there was so much turbulence around me as I was growing up through civil wars, as a refugee listening to the news coming from a country that was in civil war, I grew up being very aware that what I have is the present moment. I can fight for something that's long term, but I must use the now well. So. If I think about uh, my organization and my impact on people I work with, perhaps I, perhaps I probably ask them to take risks. Yeah, I'm a risk taker. I really want to use this moment in the best possible way. So take a risk, do something and get on with it. We still face significant challenges. In rural development, climate change, inequality and women's rights will continue to be key challenges of our age. Enough said. Now we must get to work. I am um, a little impatient with people who are not practical, you know, who are not putting practical solutions on the table. If there's a way to, cut, to stop suffering, we should stop it. One billion people still live on less than a dollar a day. That shouldn't be. We can't just keep saying that there's a growing middle class when there's one billion people in a world full of riches that are hungry and are living desperate life. In a way, I can say, yes, I've succeeded because there are some struggles where we fought and won something. But then I keep looking at the world and I see four famines today, four famines in Nigeria, in South Sudan, in Somalia, and in Yemen. Children dying. Perhaps 1.4 million children will die this year of starvation. I don't feel success. I guess it depends on the moment when you find me. There are moments when I'm excited about what we've done and battles we've won, and then there are moments when I feel, oh my God, roll up our sleeves, let's get going, there's work to do. I see myself as part of a movement and with a long journey ahead, many challenges. That keeps me going. Every day I wake up, there's a lot of work to do.